there. And who, who, who would this be directed to? Would you like if, to come up? If I could ask Mr. Walsh. Okay. Mr. Walsh, uh, if you would mind. Uh, Matt, uh, thank you for being here. You're thank recognized. You. Just a quick question for you. We've heard in the news last week and even today that it's pro-life to vote against this bill. We've heard that um, suicides are prevalent and uh, suicide has impacted my family, so I'm sensitive when I hear something like that. I, I, I've, I've read some of the stuff that you've done and I was wondering, can you speak to the statistics of, of uh, mental health and suicidal tendencies for the people who have gone through transition or for people who have not. In your studies, from what I've read, can you, can you speak to that? Mr. Sure. Walsh, you recognize. <clears throat> sure. Uh, well, the claim that uh, you know, doing the chemical castration drugs or surgery or hormonal intervention, the claim that this prevents suicide or uh, has uh, positive psychological effects down the line is utterly, totally baseless. Um, there are no credible long-term studies that bear that out. And one of the reasons for that is that there couldn't possibly be any credible long-term studies because we've never done this to kids on this scale ever before in history. So this current, uh, shall we say, crop of children, they are the guinea pigs. This is, this is all experimental. We're sort of trying it out on them to see if it works. Um, now, they have attempted a few times to do studies. And the interesting thing is that the World Professional Association of Transgender Health, WPATH, which is a radical far-left pro-trans organization, they commissioned a study to try to prove that, um, that hormones and puberty blockers uh, uh, decrease suicide rates among uh, trans, uh, trans-identified youth. And even in their own study, they found that they couldn't, they, couldn't, they couldn't prove it. They couldn't make that link because it's just not possible to do. The other thing I would mention, too, is that you know, the, the, the number of trans-identified youth has skyrocketed in recent years. We're talking about exponential 10x, 20x growth. Just huge numbers have, 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 uh, have, have increased. And what we hear from the pro-trans side is that, uh, well, this is not a social contagion. It's just that, you know, there's always been this many trans people. It's just that they were not in an affirming uh, environment before in history, and so they couldn't come out. And now, for the first time, trans people uh, have, have the ability to live their truth, so to speak. Well, if that's the case, and there have always been these sort of like millions of trans people, and if it's also true that if we don't affirm them, that it would cause them to commit suicide, then we should be able to look back in history and find just this unbroken, incredible epidemic of children mysteriously killing themselves because they weren't being affirmed as trans. And what you find is that that didn't exist. I mean, the, the, the youth suicide rate has increased exponentially alongside trans affirmation. So trans affirmation causes the suicide rate, not the other way around. The last thing I'll note is that... Um, the suicide rate among trans-identified people is, is sky high. It remains sky high. All the data shows this. It remains sky high even after surgery. And in fact, in the most reliable data that we have, it's uh, years after surgery when suicidality is the highest for trans-identified people. That's the reality. Chairman right. Pesson, you're good? Okay. Any further questions for Mr. Walsh while we're out of session? Uh, Mr. Hammer? Mr. Uh, Representative Hammer? Thank you. Uh, I found it, uh, thank you, Mr. Walsh. I found it interesting, one of our... Uh, um, people uh, testified today that they uh, had their gender affirming surgery at 16. And I know uh, you in former comments mentioned uh, this uh, on your blog. At about 16, you're an adult who is mature and can make decisions. Uh, you're that at 16. I don't care what anybody says. Even going so far as to say, you know, 16 people, uh, when you're 16, you should be married and, uh, and could be pregnant or should be pregnant. Um, so I'm curious if 16 is... Uh, a, uh, an adult, in your view, uh, why does this bill have uh, the uh, minor de defined as 18? Uh, Mr. Yeah, well, that's, uh, recognized. Yeah, that's, that's a hit piece you took from Media Matters, uh, from something when I was a, a radio host uh, 13, 14 years ago, my early 20s. Uh, it's also not an accurate reflection of what I actually said. Um, I was talking about uh, the fact that people tended to marry young historically, and that's all that that was about. Um, how does that relate to, the, to this subject? Just curious of your definition of, of if you feel like people are adults at 16, should... Well, uh, people are adults just... at 18, uh, but actually your, your brain is not fully developed until you're 25. So we should be having a conversation about whether we should even be doing these surgeries to people at 18. 
But certainly before 18, it's, it's absurd. I mean, do you, do, you, do you think that a 16-year-old can meaningfully consent to having their body parts removed? Do, do you? No? We do not. Yeah, we ask the questions. It's not you. It's uh, okay. Representative Hammer, you are recognized. No more questions? Okay. Uh, Representative Clemens, you're recognized. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, can you give us a summary of your educational background or your health care education experience? M Mr. Walsh, you're recognized. My experience in health care? Your educational background. I'm just curious. You, 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 you've yeah. testified as to a lot of your own research, so I'm curious for what purpose you do that and what background you have to qualify you to speak to that. Well, my background that qualifies me to speak to this is that I'm a human being with a brain and common sense, and I have a soul. And so, therefore, I think it's a really bad idea to chemically castrate children. That is my experience. Um, also, I, I did, now it's true, I didn't, I didn't go to college, but I did go to school long enough to learn how to read so I can read the data for myself, and that's exactly what I've done. Uh, Representative Clements, you're And for what purpose do you um, conduct your research and use this brain of yours? Mr. Walsh, you're recognized. I use it for the purpose of trying to protect children from being castrated and mutilated. That's one of the things I try to do. You don't use it to, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You don't use it to get clicks on your Let's state publication? That. Well, are you using it right now to try to get clicks with this interaction? On, no. I, 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 I really like the Mr. idea Walsh. of getting, uh, of, of drawing attention to the fact that this is happening to children. I know you seem to find it very amusing. I don't. Uh, Representative Clements. Well, you made a lot of misrepresentations and, and category, characterizations in your comments, so I think it's fair to, for me to question your background. What did I and your base, Let me finish, please. You're recognized Representative Clements. You know, if you're going to come before a committee and make mischaracterizations and misrepresentations, it's fair game for us to ask you your educational background and your foundational knowledge for making such characterizations. That's, that's my point. So I'm curious about you speaking to the development of the human brain at the, by the age of 25. I seem to recall you advocating on behalf of firearm possession at the age of 18. Do you think let's, that's appropriate? Let's stay on the bill, please. That's all I got. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, can I respond to that? Uh, Representative Mitchell, you're recognized. I can't respond to what Representative yeah, Mitchell's th right thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, you know, you, I think your original article, blog post, or tweet, or whatever, kind of started this firestorm. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, where we need to look for these surgeries, because I'm still trying to find, you know, the surgeries, because, you know, the, the sponsor of the bill last week, I kind of agreed with him. I said, we need to split this bill in the two parts. You know, I may agree with him on the surgery part because I don't think it's happening. So, you know, you seem to have started this. So I need your evidence of where these surgeries are occurring in Tennessee. Could you, could you give me, you know, places, times, maybe some names uh, or something that, you know, yeah. you, you know of? Mr. Yeah, my, Walsh, Mr. Walsh, you're recognized. My evidence is the health care provider's own words. You know, I, I, uh, I outlined Vanderbilt Health and their uh, transgender care um, program and the people that work for that program, their own words, talking about what they do and talking about, for example, um, providing the chemical castration drugs to, to adolescent children. Um, as far as surgeries, you know, double mastectomies do happen. And the way that I know that they happen is that after I called attention to this program at Vanderbilt, they said that they were going to stop performing. They were going to put a pause on the program that performs these surgeries on minors. And so if you're pausing the program that performs surgeries on minors, then I'm going to assume that the program existed. Otherwise, you couldn't have paused it. So now, the exact number of uh, kids who are being subjected to this, I, I don't know exactly. It's really hard to come up with those numbers, I think, because the people doing it aren't really proud of it. And it, they, there's not a lot of interest on their end to tell us. But I do think that you know, even one child being horrifically mutilated is too many. So I know that it's more than one, and that's reason enough to put a stop to this, I would say. 
Representative Mitchell, you recognize? Yeah. So, so last week I had an amendment that you know we're looking to protect children from abuse, and I also had an amendment to stop cosmetic surgery of rhinoplasty and breast enhancements to minors. How would you feel about that? You know, sure. is that mutilation of children as well under the age of eighteen? Uh, they can't think for right. themselves. Representative Mitchell, that's not on uh, the bill that we have. Yeah, it is. It's surgical. I, it's surgical. I, I'm happy to answer that. You're free to answer, Mr. Walls. Okay. Uh, my personal feeling about banning breast enhancements for, for minors? Yeah. Yes, I, I would be all for, personally, I'd be all for banning that, absolutely. Yeah. Representative Mitchell. Okay, and, and so I think the previous representative, you know, proved that you have no medical background, correct? Uh, no. So, so you're here probably just as a public policy. You, you're trying to address good public policy, correct? Represent, or Mr. Walsh. Yes. So I just have to question, you know, some of your public policy, you know, expertise when, you know, I'm reading here, Singapore is able to have nice things in part because they execute drug dealers by hanging and arrest even petty vandals and thieves and beat them with a cane until they bleed. We don't have nice things here because we aren't willing to do what is required to maintain them. So, you know, with statements like that, I kind of have to question your public policy beliefs. And, you know, and you also stated there had been no studies well, I'm sitting here holding a study from the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, from the University of Pittsburgh about the uh, suicidal disparities between transgender and cisgender uh, adults and children. Uh, so I think, you know, before you state things, you may need to know all the facts. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, is that, can I respond? Uh, Chairman Williams, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion to go back out of session or back into session. Thank you. Is there an objection? All right. 